So today at Sinegar, we're just really trying to catch bubbles. This right? is way more fun than a normal trade show. Come on. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> the California sun is out. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. You got beers and hats. You need a hat? Well, you need a hat? Well, not we'll get you one at the end of the interview. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So, uh, Mike. Yes. We're here at Senegal. We are. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, and we're going to talk about SSDs, right? Yes. Because a lot of people will still say that, well, obviously, SSDs are still more expensive than normal spinning disks. So why would someone really, well, why would you change now to SSDs? So that's a big question, and it's it a big is. answer, and it's a great, it's a great question. So I think the resistance to SSDs comes from a lot of different places. In the beginning of SSDs, everyone was super hot on this idea of having a really fast drive. But for production purposes, some of them weren't exactly where they needed to be. Some of the SSDs would get hot really fast, so the performance would degrade really quickly. Some SSDs were really expensive, so you know, you'd pay five or ten times the amount for a terabyte of SSD storage and memory versus a spinning disk. So you had a lot of different factors that prevented people, and it kind of built up this resistance. And what we're finding is SSDs, A, the prices have come down to a place where, you know, minimal difference between the two. So a spinning disk versus an SSD, sometimes maybe, you know, depending on the capacity, it could be 150 bucks or 500 bucks. Um, the issues with the heat, at least on the GTEC SSDs, the G Technology SSDs has been eliminated. I know you've seen the G Drive Pro and the Mobile Pro and the R series. They have really nice heat sinks inside of them. So the thermodynamics are such that they're meant to be run full time. So you don't have the performance degradation. So the price gap is narrowed. The performance has actually accelerated. Um, and now we actually have real world applications where we can see what the value is, right? I think it was a little bit, you know, just to go faster isn't valuable unto itself. You kind of need to know why, why do I care? Yeah. So we're learning and we've learned from documentary filmmakers and unscripted filmmakers and television producers and filmmakers, all these different folks who have kind of different permutations of the same problems. You know, on set, the problem is the end of the day always takes too long. So. We started kind of having this conversation with filmmakers and they would say, well, you know, my producer doesn't want me to spend this money or a television production company saying, you know, we have a finite budget. Okay, well, let me give you a few SSDs. Let me give you some R series to use the shuttle drives or EV RAWs to give you the shuttle drives and let's see how it goes. And what would happen is a week or two later, somebody would place an order for 50 of them or 100 of them or 20 of them and they would say the same thing. I save an hour at the end of my day because the DIT isn't waiting for things to copy. My post-production supervisor is a lot happier because getting things from set into post is much quicker. Um, and I'm just not waiting for as much to happen. And with the, the 8 bay SSD, with the shuttle SSD, now that extends even through the post process where the post people aren't sitting and waiting for data. They're not waiting for things to be ingested because the shuttles have SSDs. Their ingest point is an SSD. And the drive they're working off of is an SSD. So like, the entire pipeline is now faster from production all the way through to post. And all the people who touch it, who have to wait around, that's, that's their time and that's, that's somebody's money. Somebody is spending money. So if it's a producer, like the producers are now going, oh yeah, so if I spend like a few hundred dollars more per drive or even you know, on, the, on the R series, it's like 150 more versus the spinning one terabyte. If I spend 150 more per drive, I've now just cut off about five to 10 hours of work per week across the board. What am I paying the, the people who are sticking around? Right, so the economics are different the, the, it's, it, mentally, the economics are a little bit different, but yeah, sure. now we understand that. So now we can have those conversations. I know it's a long-winded answer, but it's, it's, it's interesting because the problem isn't the same for everybody, but it kind of is, right? The DIT just wants to get in and out and get their job done. Yeah. Dits are going to be happy to get paid a little bit of overtime, but no dit wants to be on set for an extra two hours waiting for data to copy over. And the post guys, yeah, they're getting paid for their time, but the quicker they turn around your job means the quicker they can get to the next job. So there's... There's trade-offs and I think we're starting to figure out how it works and we're also starting to figure out what SSD is the right SSD for, for particular jobs. Right? You, you don't need 2800 megs per second on set as your shuttle drive. It's a little bit of overkill. Mainly the camera cards aren't going to move that quickly. You know, the, the ingest, the, the bottleneck isn't going to be the drive, the bottleneck is going to be your camera cards or it's going to be how much you're shooting. So there's, yeah, we're learning and it's cool. It's really fascinating and, and 
we keep learning more and the more we learn, the more we try to help our partners and our customers so they get the thing that helps them the most and solves the problem that they have the most. Do you get specific feedback like from these end users that you will take into account for like a next product brand, for example? Of course, of course. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, that's the, the what's, what's sure. feedback without but taking is it, it. But is, is there any type of feedback you can touch upon that you say like, okay, this is something for us to work on or that will be in. Yeah, I think I can, I, I think that, yeah. Okay, so with the 8-bay SSD, hopefully this won't get me into trouble. I actually think it won't. With the 8-bay SSD, one of the things that we heard was that if you have eight SSDs running at the same time on set, you're saturating Thunderbolt 3. Again, it, it, it's yeah. kind of overkill. Why can't we put the EV modules into the 8-bay SSD shuttle, yeah. right? Why can't you? So we went, we took that feedback, and we're about to productize the EV sled. So you'll be able to actually take out two of the, the, the SSD sleds yeah. and replace them with EV readers. So now you've got four SSDs with two readers, so your camera cards can come out, ingest directly into an SSD. So you've got SSD camera cards, presumably, or CFast, whatever it happens to be that you're working off of, going to an SSD shuttle. So you, now you've got a workflow that actually, it, 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 it's, it's matching speed of the camera card into speed of the SSD. A little bit faster on the SSD side, but you get the idea, right? So that was feedback that directly came from the field. Why can't we do this? And it's in a really nice compact package if you do it like that. I, I mean, I obviously I'm biased, but I tend to think so, right? <laughs> yeah. You've got a box this big that you can stick in a Pelican case. And you know the, the weight part of it is also really interesting. We, we have companies that are taking the SSD sleds out um, and what they're doing with those two extras. So now they have EV sleds. They have two sleds that are four SSDs inside. They're taking those and they're cycling between from post on to set. So they have four in the, four in the drive. Those four get loaded up, ingested off the camera cards. They pull those, they put them in a, a Pelican case, yeah. ship those off, and then the new ones come back in. We didn't think about that. That's not a workflow that we, we specifically set out to, to, to fix. And yet, here we are. Our customers are saying, yeah, it's great. Because those SSDs weigh nothing. So if I have to ship them across the country, the cost of shipping them is it's like, less. You save money on every type of... Yeah. Exactly. So it, that was something we hadn't thought about. And then, you know, I can't say so much about it, but I can tell you that with respect to the EV series, we're always taking feedback there and we're always trying to make it better. So, you know, we, we have the CBAS readers, we have the red readers, um, we have the Atomos card readers and the ingest points. We will continue to expand on that series and continue to expand on the drives themselves. So the EV RAWs, we came out with a two terabyte SSD EV RAW shuttle. Um, we have the one and two terabytes there. And so those are points where people are saying, you know, higher resolution camera, we need more capacity. Yeah. Okay, but do you want two terabytes of spinning or do you want two terabytes of SSD? Well, you gave me the SSD, now I want SSD. Okay, cool, we'll go there. So there's a lot in terms of that ecosystem that we're gonna continuously expand. And internally, what we're also doing from a non-product perspective is just, we take that learning, we create workflow documentation, we have an entire team that's doing that now. So we're literally, we just, somebody comes to our studio, we give them a, a whiteboard, we draw out their workflow and we go, does this, does this look like what you're doing? And when they say yes, we say, okay, cool. And then we actually create some documentation that we can give out to other customers and say, hey, this sounds like you're having this problem. Here's what we've done to solve that. Or here's three different things that we've done to solve that problem. And I think that's as important as product. <laughs> like, because it's, exactly. it's a hard because drive. Because it's like, it's like the real world yeah. situation and where you just have to work with the drives. Yeah, I'm like, this drive yeah. is really fast and you're going to look at me and go, mm, yeah. doesn't okay. really resonate with me. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You, you tell me, okay, I'm shooting on a new red helium and I've got two cameras going and I've got a, a near set DIT car and I have my post that's you know 25 minutes away by car. Okay, cool. I can design a workflow for you or I can pull from the workflows we've already designed and go, does this look like the right solution to your problem? And, and then you'll, you'll smile and you'll, you'll thank yeah. me and it'll be a lot better than me just saying, oh, you, you need an R series, you need a new drive. You, know, you probably need that too. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Mike. No problem. <laughs>